All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be our next video on membranes. And what we want to cover today is understanding what the concentration gradient is in more detail. Let's get started on this next video. So we briefly touched on what concentration gradient is in the last video, but let's make sure we go over the definition. All it is, it's the process of particles moving from an area where there is a higher number of them to an area where there is a lower number of them. So if we look back on our examples here, we want the particles to move from point A to point B. They are naturally going to go through and diffuse because we have a higher number of particles in A. They're going to move with the concentration gradient. No energy is going to be needed and this is naturally going to happen. Now, in the scenario on the right, we are moving against the concentration gradient. The reason we're moving against the concentration gradient is we want to go from A to B, but the particles want to diffuse the other way. And in a cell, we don't always want that to happen. So let's go through and look at this analogy to understand with and against the concentration gradient in more detail. So if we think about concentration gradient like a river, a river is going to go through and flow in one direction. We can zoom in on that river, and we can kind of think about the direction of water flow being analogous to the concentration gradient or the flow in which the particles move. So in a river, the direction of water flow, as we move with the concentration gradient, that's like our tube moving with the river. It requires no energy, and I'm moving with the gradient of the river flowing. Now, if I want to go back up the river, well, I'm going to have to paddle myself. I'm moving against the concentration gradient, or I'm moving against the river. In order to go through and do that, it's going to require lots of energy to move against the flow and the direction of the water. This is an analogy we can think of when talking about concentration gradient. So if we think about concentration gradient here, well, which way is down the concentration gradient? If I go through and put a transport protein, the concentration gradient is this way because the molecules are naturally going to want to diffuse this way to achieve equilibrium. So in this scenario, we're moving down the concentration gradient this way. If we go to this scenario, well now which way is down the concentration gradient? More particles at the bottom, less particles at the top. They're going to want to diffuse this way. So now this way is down the concentration gradient. And we can see the particles naturally going through and moving in that direction, moving down that concentration gradient. Remember, what we're trying to achieve here via diffusion is equilibrium. We want to go through and achieve the maximum amount of space that these molecules want to go through and diffuse. And this is naturally what they're going to do. All right, so let's go through and look at this scenario and change the parameters a little bit. I know that the concentration gradient is moving this way towards the inside of the cell. So the molecules are going to naturally diffuse into the cell. But I want the molecules to move outside of the cell. I want to change the parameters here. How is this going to happen? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a process to move the molecules against the concentration gradient called active transport. Now, in active transport, it is going to require energy. It's going to require energy to move these molecules. It's like paddling up the river against that concentration gradient. And what I can do is I can pump them and get rid of them and move those molecules away or against that concentration gradient. It's important for us to understand here that active transport requires energy. Now, if we try to piece this all together and try to make the connection, remember concentration gradient is from where particles want to move from an area of a higher number to an area of a lower number. If I'm moving with the concentration gradient, I'm moving from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. By doing this, the molecules naturally go through and diffuse either into or out of the cell, depending upon which way the concentration gradient is, and no energy is needed. The difference is, is when I go against the concentration gradient, I'm moving from an area of low concentration to an area of high concentration. In this case, the molecules are not going to naturally want to go through and diffuse, and energy is going to be required to pump against that concentration gradient. We call this active transport. So, Again, this was a lot of information in a short period of time. Did you learn? Well, did you learn a couple of things here? 
Do you understand what a concentration gradient is and can you define the definition? Do you know how concentration gradient is related to diffusion? And now do you have an understanding of when energy is needed to transport things inside and outside of the cell? This is going to be the end of the video. I will see you all in class tomorrow.